to sharpen up your presentation, uh, your persuasion presentation, three things. A lot of people are winging it. I know this from doing the sales training. I know this from being a consultant for all kinds of Fortune 500 companies. But what my suggestion to you is that you actually think about it in advance and think about these three things in particular as you get ready to be persuasive. Number one is content. When your content is really good and you're presenting new information that people haven't heard before, they lean in. You know, you can almost see them go like this. Watch, they go, right? Um, you see? And, and that's a that's a that's what's called a buy signal. So they go, what now? That that's interesting. It's someone like cocking an ear toward what you were saying. Um, so how do you do this? One easy way to to present your content in an interesting original way is to use a statistic. I'll give you a couple of examples of this. Uh, because I teach presentation skills, I happen to know how many words there are in the English language. But it turns out most people who speak English have no idea. So if I reference that there are about 500,000 words in the English language, not counting gerunds, verb derivatives, uh, and so on, I have your attention because I've just taught you something you don't know in three seconds. True or false? Thumbs up? Yeah, I mean, maybe you knew. Maybe you're one of the rare people that knows how many words there are in the English language. But if you didn't, I just sent you a signal that I know something you don't know, which means I could be valuable to you. I'm, I'm an information source. And so you lean in, and then I proceed with, proceed with the persuasion, whatever it is I, I'm, I'm getting ready to ask you to do. All persuasion involves what's called the CTA. Anybody? CTA. Go ahead, Keith. Call to action. Call to action. Bonus points for Keith. So the call to action uh, should be uh, in every presentation and it should be very specific. No vagaries, right? A lot of salespeople, the, the call to action is, well, you should think about this and maybe get back with me if you're interested. That's not a call to action, you know? A, call to, a specific call to action sounds like this. Uh, I think you would really enjoy this. I think you should do it now. And I happen to have a, uh, a square with me right now. I can accept credit card. You like to use Visa or MasterCard? That's specific. Because if they say, I need to think about it, what is almost certain to happen? Anybody? Nothing. They're going to go home. You're going to be, you're going to be, the psychic energy's gone. You had them emotionally while you're in front of them. They don't get more excited when they go home and talk to the spouse about spending money. Right? Um, so uh, I'm not saying be aggressive. I'm not even saying be pushy. But I think the call to action needs to be very specific. When I recruit people to join Rotary, and I've signed up three people in the last 50 days during a pandemic, me alone, I'm very specific about what it takes to get into our club. I tell them the exact procedure. I tell, I tell them how long it will take before they start seeing benefits. I always tell them I don't know for sure, but many people see benefits. And, and if you do what I tell you to do and, and actually work the Rotary Club, you know, when I say work it, I mean get involved, the, the benefits will come to you even sooner. Most people join Rotary and what do they do? They just show up a few weeks in a row. They don't actually do anything. I say, let's get you on a committee. Let's get you involved. There are four people I want to introduce you to the very first meeting you attend. If you remind me, I'd be happy to do that for you. And I start making those connections. Like let's say they're a people person. They're joining, they're, they're joining so they can connect with more people. So I, again, reverse presentation. I say, great, uh, let's get you to this first meeting as my guest. And on that call, I'm going to introduce you to three people that will be good for your business. Does that sound good to you? That's called the yes question. And they go like that. And what do you think they say? Why, yeah, that's exactly what I want. And then I say, great, easy. Because that's an easy thing for me to do. We get on the call. I clear it with the president in advance. I want to introduce our new guest to a, a few people. Is that okay with you, Mr. President? He goes, yeah, of course, because he knows what I'm doing. And then everybody's happy. It's a win, right, for everybody. Beneficial to all concerned. Lovely. 
So the first thing that you want to think about is content. You're going to teach them something they don't know. I told you you can use a statistic to do that. Um, the second thing that you can do is change. You can use a very unique delivery to get it done. Like I tend to do a very interactive presentation. Thumbs up if I've addressed you by name during our time tonight. By name. Look at, look, look at both screens, everybody. Keep your thumbs up. Look at both screens. Steve, how are you? Lisa, I'm still doing it. Hi, Seidel. Hi, Maria. Hi, Joe Glover. Hi, Chris Berry. Where are your thumbs? Miranda, nice to see you. You see, when I say your name, you respond unlike any other word in the English language. And I know this, so I try to get your names out as soon as possible. How many Zoom speakers do this? Zero. So by changing the delivery, by making it seem like I'm talking to you and not about you. By the way, where am I looking right now? Take yourself off mute. Where am I looking? Right at us. I'm right looking in your eye, aren't I? Right at me. Yeah. Because I'm looking into the lens of the camera, which again is counterintuitive. I'm looking at a green dot, everybody. I'm not looking at you at all. But I make it seem like I'm looking at you. If I'm looking at the images on the screen and so many people looking at, thank you very much, Mike Greeley, absolutely, the camera. Uh, if I'm looking at my own image, I'm not looking at you at all. I wish more people knew this on Zoom. I wish salespeople knew this on Zoom. Their numbers would go way up. So the first thing you can change is your content, upgrade it. The second thing you can upgrade is your delivery. And the third thing you can upgrade is what I call, um, well, I call it humor. But under the humor category, because not everybody's funny, I would just say this. Go social when you think you should be talking business. Go social when you should be talking business. So at the beginning of a sales call, for example, sales is persuasion. I keep talking about sales. Most people have their sales hats on, salespeople. And so they're going to get into that 56-slide PowerPoint presentation and they go right to work, right to business. But what they should be doing is asking about the family. Is everybody healthy? Have you had COVID in the household? Tell me. How many children do you have? I see some photos there on the credenza behind you. How many children do you have? Oh, three. What are their names? Oh, how old are they? I did that with Lukey a minute ago with her grandchild. How old is he? What's his name? Thomas, two years old. You see, this is sending Lukey the message, I care. That's how that translates. I'm not just talking about any two-year-old. Now I'm talking about Thomas. And it's such a little thing, guys. But by, by doing those three things, content, delivery, and going social, you know, learning about the family, for example, rather than rolling out the features and benefits of your product, you'll find that you make a better connection with people. We all want this, right? We don't want this. We want this. And that's how you get it. And that's why some people are better at persuasion than others. Some are doing it almost intuitively, but most of us have to study it and actually systemize it. This is the idea. Let's do some Q&A to wrap up. I will answer anything you want. Uh, and I'm particularly interested in specific things that you're, you're working on in work or in your club. Uh, I know at least one person's getting ready to be president of the club. I can answer questions for Todd. Uh, so um, let's have at it. And I'll show you one other technique while I'm waiting for the questions. This technique is called the stall, everybody. Watch. I ask the questions, but because nobody likes dead air, I take a sip of water. Watch. What questions do you have for me? Hey, Michael, this is Jean. It's just an observation. Um, this this is really great stuff, and I think it not only to persuade in sales, but I think it's just working and 